cloud. Here we are. Welcome, welcome everybody to another awesome Powerhouse Smart Education session. Today we have our Powerhouse Smart Lender of the Year, Brian Jessen from Guaranteed Rate. Brian has been a member of Powerhouse Smart almost since the inception, which was 14 years ago. He's also probably one of our members that have probably referred a huge percentage of you that might be even on this call or listening to this later. Um, aside from like Michael Mann and D. Mac Morris, who probably uh, have referred about 50% of our community, uh, Brian knows a lot of people. He's a great connector. I personally referred a ton of business when I was a design build uh, vice president in my previous life. And of course, we've worked together since then, since Powerhouse Smart was launched about 14 years ago. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian in just a second. Just some house keeping. If you want to throw something in the chat, I'll, we'll save some time at the end. Brian's got about 15 minutes, 20 minutes of discussion points, and he's going to educate us on lending in, in the financial markets today and what does that look like for all of us in the luxury real estate design business sector. Um, so that'll be awesome. You could also go to the Powerhouse Smart website and um, see all kinds of other events that are coming. We've got a nice group here. We are recording. So if you want to mute yourself now and then ask questions later, I'll unmute you. Um, before we get started, I have a cute little poll we want to do. You know, Powerhouse Smart and our advisory board members are always um, trying to come up with new education and We've done more events in the first part of this year than we probably would have done um, otherwise because we get to do them virtually and we can make them shorter and impactful. So I'm gonna do a little poll. Please vote on the poll and then I'll close it um, and that'll help us know what topics are of interest to you. So I'm gonna launch this poll and considering powerhouse events in the future, um, which of these topics are more, are you more interested in attending? So you can select one, how to create short, impactful email and text messages would be one topic. The second one is how to enhance your work-life balance. The third one was how to create cool and professional Zoom backgrounds. And the fourth one is none, I am so done with Zoom, ha ha. <laughs> and the last one is all sound great, powerhouse is the best. So please go ahead and take a vote. And it, uh, I'll give you a, let's see, we got 30 seconds more. And we've got almost all of you voted. And one more. Okay, we're going to end the polling. So share results. Okay. Oh, so really impactful email and text messages. Awesome. That's going to be Daryl's going to be educating us on that. Daryl Katz is a consultant. He's on this call. And some of you are <laughs> joking and you're done with Zoom. I love it. I love it. Um, sounds great. Thank you for having some fun with us. Um, without further ado, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to let um, Brian educate us here. It's 107 and we're going to be right on time. Brian, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Brian Jessen. I'm a senior vice president at a company called Guaranteed Rate. We're a national lending firm that does Primary homes, second homes, investment properties, lot loans, construction loans across the nation. And I've been in this business a very long time, like 30 years. Can you hear me okay, Andy? Okay. And uh, my topic today is just going to be a little bit about what's been happening in the lending business uh, over the last really five months, four months, and how things are going to perhaps proceed going forward, both not only lending, but perhaps other in the economy. Um, if we kind of looked at where we were in January and February, pre-COVID, uh, uh, the real estate market was doing quite well across the nation. Uh, in the North Shore of Chicago, as an example, uh, sales were up about 40% from last year to this year at that point. So people were feeling, feeling good about really having a fantastic year uh, in the real estate segment. Lots of moving people, lots of buying and selling, lots of building, renovation. And then sort of COVID started coming top of mind. Uh, the market really kind of like stopped. The stock market was down 30 to 40%. People were very concerned about that. They were very concerned about the volatility that was happening in the markets. I usually get a text and it tells me how many times a day that the market moves enough to be impactful. And now I'll get one, two, maybe three texts a day if the market's moving. In that period of time, I remember the worst two days 
one was a Friday and one was another day of the week. That I had 32 texts in a day that the market was moving so much that they had to do a pricing change one way or the other. So very volatile. Uh, no one had really commented about what was going to happen in the lending side of the world in the financial. So people were very nervous. Interest rates actually, believe it or not, moved up about a percent, a quarter percent and a half in a few weeks' time. And uh, the Federal Reserve or sort of helps control economic policy to a certain extent, and interest rate policy. Uh, finally, kind of stepped up to the mic and talked about how they're going to. Any other question? Yeah, Brian, you know what? We practiced a little earlier. You, your volume was much, much better. I think you maybe changed your room. It's a little in and out, and I don't want to miss any valuable uh, golden nuggets that you're giving. So, um, do you move the microphone closer to you? Yeah, let's try. Can you hear me a little closer? Can you hear me a little better now? Yes, thank you. Okay. So, um, basically, the Fed stepped up and said they were going to do. Um, uh, support of the treasury market and some other markets, but they didn't specifically mention mortgages. They finally did on a Sunday step up to the market and say, we're going to buy every single mortgage that's 510400 some larger limits like on the West Coast and East Coast that you write. Any mortgage that you write that's that number, we'll buy them all. So that following day, that Monday, in one day, which is unprecedented, interest rates dropped 1% in one day because they said they were going to backstop the market. Now, there's different types of markets. There's just your sort of government Fannie Freddie market. There is jumbo market, which a lot of us are in the luxury side of the market. So there's a jumbo market of mortgages. And then there's the kind of wonky, you've got a bankruptcy not too long ago, you own a business and you make a lot of money, but you don't show a lot of money on your tax returns, but you do have a lot of cash flow in your business. There's a kind of non, called non-qualified mortgages, that, that part of the business, actually in the February, March, April period, just actually went away completely, like they completely stopped lending money in that market. And the jumbo market was conservative and actually has made some changes that have impacted lending in that they've got more conservative. So they're not sure how the real estate market is gonna open up. I mean, think about it, June will probably be the start of our normal February, March, real estate market, and it's going to be really June when a lot of these restrictions, at least part of them are going away. People will be able to tour houses more easily. Uh, some of the social distancing will stay there, but with, you know, a little bit more activity. So um, loan to values have gotten a little bit more conservative. Um, if you're self-employed, like a Chase, for instance, has gotten more conservative. Wells and SunTrust, some of the bigger, larger banks, uh, have actually backed away from the jumbo market for now uh, because they're concerned about what might happen. I mean, maybe it'll be fine going forward, but they're not sure. So I'm taking a cautious approach on what will happen in the market. And I'll give you my spin on what I think will happen in the short and longer term in a little bit. Uh, some of the things that have also happened, which have been some of it to the good, uh, for instance, with COVID, has been, for instance, on closing. So you used to go to the closing, everybody would sit around, the realtor would be there, the builder could be there, I could be there, uh, the attorneys were there, everybody's kind of like a big chat fast um, in, in real time, real people, real sitting in a real room. Uh, and uh, with COVID, realtors and lenders aren't really allowed to come to closing. So what happened is we have become virtual in most of the closings. So it used to be about 10% of the time people would send their documents in front of the closing on a computer, 100% are signing their documents in front of the computer. And then the redeeming documents are either a notary comes to your house and puts them in your front door, and you bring them in your house, you sign them, put a copy of your driver's license in, and they, they wave it, then they come out of their car, pick it up. Or you go to the, the building where the title company is, you actually know, don't even go in. You um, sit in your car, they bring your documents out, you sign those two documents, give them a copy of your license, and we're going to do closing. So it's very interesting um, what's happened there. Can you hear an echo now? Is there an echo? Bit? Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So that's one thing that's changed is it's become very virtual. My business has been virtual for a while. I could sit in Hawaii or Colorado or Florida or England and write mortgages and I talk to people on the phone. I can Zoom chat them. 
um, and everything else is held is done electronically. But and then appraisal. So this is an interesting development for appraisal. So normally you have to have the appraiser go into the house, go into the building, and appraise. Many times now they're doing it virtually with the data that's online. They might drive by, take a picture of the front of the house, take a picture of the back of the house, take a straight scene, and never actually enter the house. If in certain situations, some jumbo loans cash out, they actually do have to go in the house, but it's they basically say keep the front door open, keep the lights and all the doors open, they go with the masks, they go with gloves, they don't touch a single surface other than the front door handle. They take their pictures, they're there three or five minutes, they're out of the house. And there's really no health concerns on that. You can't get COVID by somebody literally walking through your house in three minutes, not touching the surface, and having a mask and gloves on. So that's been a change where there's a ton more virtual appraisals, and but they actually do physically go in the house, they don't touch anything. And there's another quickly. Um, Size so kind of where the market is now for loans, any of those Fannie Freddie type loans, interest rates are the lowest they've ever been. So you're talking about rates anywhere from two and a half percent to the low threes, and they're as low as they've ever been, uh, which is interesting. Uh, jumbo market, some of the markets are still priced well. The guidelines are more restrictive. Um, they're more restrictive a little bit on self-employed. They're more restrictive on condos to a certain extent. So it's just interesting to see that change. And then that one, that wonkier market where I said where you've got Closure or bankruptcy, you need a bank statement program because your business has cash flow. That market is back online doing business, but in more conservative guidelines. So, as an example, they used to say, Take, give us your last 12 months of bank statements, your business owner, they look at the cash flow and they make the decision based on that. Now they're actually taking 24 months of bank statements and looking at your 24 month average versus 12 months. And they're one of the values are more conservative. So now a couple of trends, what I'm seeing is a lot of people getting places ready to be sold. Um, a lot of inventory that should hit the market within the next couple of weeks. Uh, buyers from the spring market, you probably have half to two thirds of those buyers still interested in buying. They haven't seen properties in, in the February, March, April, May, except that line. There's been a lot, a lot of virtual tours, a lot of people doing virtual open houses but not a lot of physical viewing of houses unless it's a vacant house. But you're going to have this very compressed market where normally you'd be like February, March, April, May, June, July, August, but now it's just June, July, August. So if you have a family and children, suddenly you're going to need to find a house quickly, buy the house quickly, you preview houses online, you know specifically the houses you want to see, and you need to close quickly. So we've been pre-approving people that literally can close now in three weeks if they need to versus the normal 45 days, 60 days, the technology and the pre-planning is then such that people are gonna get done in like two and a half to four weeks on their closing. But you're gonna have this very active market that's gonna be very compressed. Uh, going forward for the building side of things, a lot of renovation planning going on. A lot of people interested in renovations have been in their house for a ton of time, realize the downside of their places that they live people living in smaller uh, places that kind of drive themselves crazy, living in a small property. So now they're like, oh my God, we gotta get out of here. Uh, we need something larger. Or even condos in the city, whether like with their families or even with their spouses and significant others. They're like this condo is too small. This apartment's too small. We need something bigger. So there'll be some upsizing of condos. And there'll be people leaving the condo market and either go another part of the city or single family who are going out to the suburbs for larger lots, single family homes that you'll see in this trend. Um, one other trend to be aware of is, and this has been the last like three to six months, uh, people on the coast, people in Wendy's area, California, people in New York, New Jersey, seeing how expensive housing is on the coast, realizing how inexpensive housing is in the Midwest. Yes, real estate taxes are higher here per thousand of Cost, but if a house costs three and a half million in California, that house can easily be a million and a half dollars here. So then the real estate taxes are somewhat comparable. The top end tax rate in California is 13.3%, and the top tax rate here is roughly 5%. So that might change, but right now we have a much lower tax rate. So people are starting to look at 
Alex Benson is going to live in New Jersey, live in New York, not happy with what was going on in Manhattan, not pleased with how expensive uh, real estate is in California in general, and starting looking to Midwest as an opportunity to have a good quality of life. Yes, the weather's not as nice as California, that's for sure. Certainly more, more miserable here than it is in New Jersey and New York, but looking at the Midwest as opportunities, whether it be Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, as opportunities to relocate. So I've seen that much more in the last six months than I've ever seen. So with that all said, um, interest rates kind of summary are super low. Most of the guidelines are fine. Jumbos have some more conservative guidelines depending on your situation. And really just a very compressed real estate market this summer. So be busy, you'll be busy, stay hydrated, stay wet, rested because you're gonna work a lot of extra hours. And building trends, a little bit of a wait and see some people, they're not sure um, how they feel about what's gonna happen in the economy, when it's gonna like, how quickly it's gonna uh, rebound, how quickly it's gonna rebound. Those 36 million people that are out of work, how many of them will get reemployed within several months? They're predicting 70 to 80% of those people being reemployed. We'll have to see if that's true or not. Um, and so there's a little bit of cautiousness on the building side, a little bit of cautiousness on the renovation side, knowing that that's a longer cycle of uh, projects. So with that said, um, I tried to make that somewhat brief. Uh, are there any questions from anybody that want to ask me, whether it be lending or demographic trends? Wow, that was great, um, Brian. Very um, concise. Thank you so much. So it's really interesting. So you, you're really seeing that things are gonna get very busy. Um, um, one of the things you and I chatted about earlier was these virtual open houses. Are people really still doing that? Will they do that, do you think, after to, to take that process and make it a process? You know, if they're going to see a lot of homes, they can see a lot of homes quickly and then narrow it down to go to a physical visit. What are you seeing? I'm seeing that a lot and also on the real estate community too. So people used to kind of tour, drive around house to house. They're not really going to do that as much. They're gonna look at the houses online, pick two or three that they think might be appropriate to their clients that, for their needs. One thing I forgot to mention too is all of our spaces working at home. Um, some businesses have realized it's not great for people to work at home. Other people have realized that, you know what? Our people can work very effectively at home. And maybe they do what Google's talking about um, instead of having people come in five days a week, they'll have like team A come in on Monday and Wednesday, they'll have team B come in Tuesday and Thursday, and then everyone will work from home on Friday. So when you look at commercial real estate needs longer term, like guarantee rate is an example. Our company, we have 180 offices across the United States. If you start looking at going my own office that I'm in charge of, we usually have 20, 25 people, but everyone's working from home except a few people come into their offices. Uh, do we really need as much office space? Because you can plug and play in anywhere. We can talk on the phone. All of our technology is virtual. Do we need as much commercial real estate space? So I'm a little concerned on commercial real estate needs longer term because businesses are realizing that this is an expensive item in their budget. And maybe we can work smartly with more people working at home, whether it be part-time working at home, full-time working at home, and in smaller spaces, but also that open office concept where you have you know, this big, all these desks, everyone gather around in a common space. Is that really a good idea? Is it better to have offices where people feel, either whether it's psychologically or real, feel a little safer medically? Uh, is it better to have spaces where you have a lot of offices versus an open concept? So we'll have to see what that ends up being once this gets past the critical stages and we get to sort of back to relatively normal existence, if that's a trend that ends up actually carrying through. Right, and that's actually, Kelly is on the call, and she was saying that she's in the office right now, but that they've been taking shifts, so that, uh, you know, we see that happening a lot. So there's a question from Daryl. Um, he's asked, um, I'm curious about the lasting impact of the COVID experience. Brian, do you think virtual appraisals and virtual closings will become part of the norm in the long term? Okay, good question. Um, I think for the closing part, I think yes, because people realize how efficient that is. So they realize that they can sign everything in their jammies the morning of the closing at home, then either have the person waiting by or go to that building 
and either sign a few documents to leave the office or literally have them come down to your car and sign. People are very good at efficiencies. When they see those efficiencies, they like it. I mean, look at the fact that most everybody's here working at home and you don't have a commute to an office. You don't have to necessarily get all fixed up if you don't want to, because you may not have to get on a Zoom call. But it's just interesting how if you can work in an environment at home, it depends on your environment. If you have children at home running around screaming, that may not be most efficient for you. But the time savings of not having to commute everywhere uh, is encouraging people that maybe working at home can be very productive. As far as appraisals, I think it will get back to banks and investor requirements. So right now, if you have Wendy's house, okay, and she wants to get a, a refinance out of her house, let's say she's at 4%, and now she can be at 3%, and her house is worth $800,000, and she's buying the same amount of money at a lower interest rate, what's the purpose of having that appraisal? There's so low risk in that particular loan. Why would you need to go in the house and see it? If we don't need to see all the changes that she did, to her house, and you can go online and see there's some houses that sold in the neighborhood, and that value is 750 instead of 800, and she owes 400. What difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference from the risk standpoint. On purchases, they can see houses that have similar characteristics and uh, look online and see it. It's really only the places where you've done work to your house and you want to capture that, or you're taking cash out for a physical purpose, and that's considered a little more risky. So they might like to actually see the house and see what changes have been made. Okay, great, Brian. Um, I have a question from uh, uh, Jim Dash, our attorney hey, on the line. Jim. Hi, Jim. Hey, hey Brian. Actually, it's uh, more of a, a couple, an observation and a statement. The observation is that what you know from what I've heard. I mean, it's just it's all, all you can do is speculate on the future of office space. Is you know two things that work at cross purposes. Uh, you know, probably fewer people per office, but more, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, fewer people in an office, but also more square footage per person. You know, how that nets out, you know, is anybody's guess. Uh, the thing about remote closings and whatnot that I wanted to raise, the comment is that right now in Illinois, uh, there is no law that permits remote online notaries. Uh, the governor purported to make that part of his uh, emergency order to allow remote online notaries during the COVID-19 period and the period of his emergency orders. Quite frankly, whether or not he has authority to do that, I don't know. And we're not going to know until the courts and maybe even the Illinois Supreme Court rules on that. Um, I know I, I'm actually in the Illinois Land Title Association, a member of it, and uh, I do, uh, I'm aware of, of some legislation that's pending, but it is not without some controversy. And plus the legislature has limited time. They literally just started meeting, what, yesterday, I think, and they've got 10,000 bills. I may exaggerate, but not by that much. Um, to to uh, wade through and consider it's entirely possible that no such legislation gets through this legislative year, uh, meaning that you may have a whole lot of um, uh, you know notaries that are of questionable validity, uh, which really puts can put a crimp in online closings. Yeah, I mean they're signing everything, but their note, their mortgage. And their closing statement and then some title documents and there is an actual remote notary that's a Chicago title or First American or whatever company it might be that goes either to your business or goes to your house and, and physically sees you sign them and then you give them a copy of your license for so they can notarize and say yeah that is Jim Dash and sign that document. But we are actually getting prepared for the e-notary Jim. I know it has a past ship but our company's actually preparing for that inevitability where you can sign everything on your computer, including your note mortgage and so on. It hasn't gotten to the point where it's going to happen yet, but we feel like it's only a matter of time that that does happen. Um, and it's interesting what you talked about the more space per person, you're probably right, with social distancing and people just feeling more comfortable. But I think one thing that we need to mention 
is also people like the social connections sometimes at the office, like talking to people. I think if people are missing some of that, yes, you can be on a Zoom call. I think we're getting used to doing business, you know, without actually physically meeting people. Sometimes it's still not quite the same as interacting or giving somebody a hug or saying hi to them face to face or grabbing an actual drink with them face to face. But um, it's, it's interesting. There's a, a network group I'm in called Provisors. And it was always face-to-face -face meetings. And now we've done all these Zoom calls and we're just making connections with people just talking on the Zoom call based on their experiences. And that wouldn't have happened. That would have been usually a follow-up to a physical meeting or you would have had a Zoom call or go-to meeting and then met for coffee or whatever. And it's almost like now we've jumped that step. But I think there's a number of people that maybe you're not in the office every day, but you kind of miss not being around certain people, probably certain people, you're probably happy they're not around, but other people, you know, you're probably wishing to see, you know, and it's odd not to see them from time to time. So I think people are missing some of the social connections that you make kind of hanging around with people in the office. So, um, Brian, one more question. William Cruzel asked, can you sign or record deeds remotely? And is that the same thing that Jim was saying with the notary? Yeah, you don't sign a deed, uh, they produce a deed and they do record it remotely. So they'll send it in, like Cook County will allow you to record a deed electronically. So they are allowing that. At first they were the only office that was closed in Illinois. The other counties were open recorders offices and they were closed, but they were allowing electronic uh, recordings. So they are allowing to do that. Excellent. Just, just to add, uh, yeah, the, the remote recording has been in place for quite a while. That, that predated COVID-19 by quite a bit. Um, and, and yes, you'd still physically need to sign. The issue is, can it be notarized uh, by essentially a, a notary online? And that's where, like I said, there's right now in Illinois, uh, there's an order in place by the governor, but I think it has questionable uh, uh, he had, his authority is certainly subject to question on that. Um, eventually, Brian's right, I think there will be some legislation that authorizes that, but it may not even be until next year, and you're going to have a whole bunch of transactions that happened during uh, 2020 that could be subject to question uh, where a notary is required and the notary, the person has not appeared personally before the notary. Got it. Understood. Okay. Interesting. Well, I know like Callie was saying at her company that they're going back to the office on the first. Do you think notaries might be considered um, a necessary uh, um, business? Yeah, they are. I think. Yeah. 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 Right. Can, so, what have you seen on your side of things with the new construction renovation? Have you seen any changes over the last three or four months based on you know, it's just what's going on in the economy and just people's stock portfolios and so on? Uh, certainly, yeah. And my husband's now sharing my office space too. He's also an architect. And um, from my standpoint, that stock market drop was the biggest thing. I had new clients, big project ready to start and, you know, their entire net worth dropped by 40% in the first <laughs> three days. So that project went on hold. And I think a lot of the projects, um, that are on hold um, are more in the commercial sector. I mean, that might come back in some fashion. I think residential projects are more likely to be dead, <laughs> you know, like, or transform. Really? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, in all my other colleagues in the small, small, you know, residential sector, we, you know, we're all like, well, get on that SBA loan applications. And uh, so we've all been focusing on that. And taking on whatever little smaller projects are coming through because um, the bigger projects seem to be, you know, people are very unsure about moving forward. Even yeah. though construction's happening, I have two projects starting construction this week. So that's continuing. Um, and I pulled four permits during <laughs> the COVID-19. And I've had so, a few more people, like more than typical, looking at second homes. So I don't know if they're yeah. like just to get away from where they're living every day and feeling yep. like they do something in Indiana or Michigan or Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm licensed in Michigan, tell them to call me. <laughs> well, actually, I might have somebody for you, actually. I'm literally buying a piece of land, uh, signing the contract today, actually, so that's- I am working on one 
um, second home in Michigan, um, looking at expanding that, um, doing an addition. So yeah, now that the, is a, a big market actually. Now the stock market has come back really strongly. I mean, it's come back and it's only down about 12%. I mean, depending on your portfolio, but mm -hmm. it was down 35 or 40. So I had a condo that I was selling in Delray Beach and I had a buyer and I had a backup buyer. And literally because of the stock market, Kim, the whole thing, they won back the way and the backup backed away. So yeah, I think I'm people are just being more conservative until they can see, you know, some clarity. Yeah, right. exactly. It's hard to plan anything right now, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. What about, about okay. anybody else on the call? Anybody else have anything to share? Yeah, about? I thought maybe Glenn, if you want to unmute yourself, Glenn, and kind of what's going on in the construction side for your business. Um, it, you know, it's interesting because we're actually, we're getting a lot of leads from, we do design build, but, um, you know, the kind of projects that we're getting leads from are people that have purchased a house, you know, moving from the city to the suburbs. And, um, you know, the houses need a lot of work. So they're not moving in yet. Um, they've got pretty decent budgets, um, but they're uh, more than ever that we've seen, you know, it's mostly the, you know, the early thirties, late twenties, you know, having kids moving to the suburbs kind of people um, that were- and What budget, what budget uh, ranges are you seeing? Like 200,000 to 500,000? Yeah, or? yeah, they're like more than I would expect from someone that's, you know, one of the guys, like his email address was like something 92. And I'm like, oh, what's the 92? And he goes, oh, that was the year I was born. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, you're like 28 years old and you're, you know, spending a lot of money. Good for you. Um, and uh, that's a know, person we all got to know. know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I, actually, tonight I've got two, um, two meetings of uh, same kind of thing, you know, moved and they want to do a lot of stuff and they want to go quick. The thing we're running into, the challenges are, are permits. Um, you know, we do a lot of work in Naperville and Naperville, you know, completely shut down. So now, you know, we had permits ready to be picked up, but we had to start the process all over again. They wanted everything digitally. So, which is frustrating because we're, you know, it's all, it's in a drawer waiting, waiting to be picked up, um, but we have to wait. So, you know, we have to deal with those kind of issues, but, um, in some places, do you, like, like, do you feel like that's opening up on June first? Is that going to be something that you can? Yeah, do I don't again? know. They won't give us an exact date and everything. Um, like in Skokie, we had a uh, we had, we have to do an appearance review commission, you know, a meeting, and they did it mm -hmm. on a Zoom, and it was great. And I'd be shocked if they go back to the old way um, after that of you know sitting in a room on a Monday night, you know, for three hours when it can all be done. Virtually, so I think there's a lot of real, real positives coming out of this. But um, as far as work, it's been, um, it's been, it's been kind of, it's better than I thought. You know, when we kind of started all this stuff. Yeah. How about you, Jim? What are you seeing from your side of things for working with business owners? Uh, boy, I got it's. It's really a mixed bag, and it depends a lot on who owns your project. I've got some con uh, some contractor clients reporting that about half of their book of business has come to a virtual halt and the other half is going full bore, uh, which is interesting from a couple of different perspectives. Uh, I mean, basically what they've done then is they've been able to shift personnel uh, you know, where from projects that have essentially been owner frozen onto uh, projects where uh, the work is continuing uh, in order to maintain schedules and um, you know also keep their keep their people employed during the COVID-19 period so and it, you know but it, it, it varies a lot I've got another uh, general contractor client that builds uh, a lot of schools and, and other public uh, improvements in Wisconsin that basically says their entire, their entire book of business is going. Oh, now, really? Yeah, well, that's public, though. The, yeah. the public entities, by and large, you know, particularly for new construction, haven't stopped much uh, it, because they don't have, I mean, you know, they're, they're going to have their money and they're going to spend it 
you know, whether the market goes up or down. Uh, whereas private developers don't have that luxury. Right. How about you, Daryl? What have you seen with your clients that you're talking to and you're doing coaching with? What kind of feedback? Yeah, you know, uh, Brian, it's interesting. I've always said that tr corporate training is a leading indicator. And by that, I mean that if a company is growing, they're hiring, they're thinking about orientation training. Uh, if business is, is good, they want to train people. When business starts to slow, usually a training budget is one of the first things that get pulled back. Now, this is different. I've only had one client, one company that said, we're, we're pulling the plug. We, we need to save our resources. We can't afford training. So goodbye. We'll come back to you later. I've had a lot of uh, businesses who have said, we don't know what to do next. You know, we're virtual. Uh, do we want virtual training? Uh, should we defer? But no one said we're pulling the plug except for the one. So I, I'm tempted to say holding steady, but now nine, 10 weeks into it, it's still kind of holding steady. So I'm wondering, you know, is it going to be steady so long it's going to drop off or is, are they going to come back? And um, so. And, and in what format, right? What's that? And in what format, virtual or, or live, right? Yeah. Virtual for sure. And I shared this with Wendy earlier. I sat in on a meeting yesterday of college presidents and deans. That's uh, the Northern Illinois Workforce Coalition. And the theme was uh, either we're not going to hold in on campus classes this fall, or we just don't know what to do yet. And so I don't see movement in that direction either. Yeah, that's a big thing, too. Yeah, because I've got kids in college and they spend spending all this money and it's crazy. How about you, Jason? What have you seen on your side? Well, my fledgling business is still all based on meeting new architects and interior designers at this point and getting a hold of any of them has been basically impossible. Um, they're just, just, I can only imagine they're trying to keep their own business afloat and meeting, taking meetings with someone new is just not happening. So mm. it's been very impactful for you. Yeah. I don't know if Bill's still on there or not. I see his logo, but I don't see him. So I'm not sure if he's on or not. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Wendy, are you still on the call or are you? Gosh, yeah, I'm here. So uh, the only two people who didn't get to say anything were um, uh, uh, William, and he's not on video wise. William, I know you, you already voiced a question in the chat. If you want to say anything, now's a good time. And then Kelly, same with you. If you'd like to say anything, you know, you're in the moving business. I don't know if you're only moving B2B or if you're also moving. Yeah, I know you deliver cabinetry, you do other things. How are things going? Yeah, things are still busy. Um, we had to change a lot of our processes, but things are still busy. Um, moving, like residential moving, has actually grown a lot recently. In the past week or so, our appointments are booking up. Um, our estimators are having to stop their virtual and get more comfortable with going back into homes and doing that. People are more comfortable with that too, having someone come into their home. So I think I see it going back up. I think. I think it's getting there. So. People are thinking about it. I watch our um, website analytics and everything too. And, you know, we're seeing that move up too. So people are starting to think about moving and looking online and at least that first process kind of like um, you said that the, whatever, what was it? February, March market is moving now, June, July. We're, you know, we're squishing it all in right now. So I think that's what's happening with us too. Yeah. Great, great. So personally, since I've been on a lot of Zoom calls and I've talked to a lot of our members, um, when we've had a lot of realtors on our calls as well. So I'm sure the realtors that RSVP to come to this will probably be listening to the recording. But everyone tells me that, you know, closings are happening, that things are selling. As a matter of fact, now's a really good time to put if you really do have to sell. You're not going to leave a lot of money on the table. Go ahead and put your house on the market because the people that are out there are serious and they are moving quickly. I think one of our uh, uh, realtors said on the last call that Northbrook like had the record amount of houses under contract. Um, I know I talked to a realtor in Naperville last week and she said things are flying. So, um, you know, it's a busy time in certain segments and again, you know, we have to be conscientious that some of us are not as busy. So let's reach out to each other. Jason, we should reach out and make sure we can get you busy just like everyone else. So um, it's always great to see everyone. Brian, this was terrific. We're at our 145. We will stop this recording and proceed. If you have any questions, reach out to Brian directly. 
Um, he's on the Powerhouse Smart website, but I'll also um, send you a follow-up email with his contact so you can reach out to him. Brian, thanks for the update as always. And you know, we are gonna continue that conversation about the virtual closings. And I know it's an essential business, but so maybe it's partially virtual. Like you said, they're sitting in their car and you run out and notarize it, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, be interesting. And, and Jim, thanks always for updating us on all the legalities, both in Illinois and Wisconsin. So everybody have a great week. I'll see you next week. We got a bunch more events. It was great seeing you. Thanks again, uh, Brian. Thanks guys. Bye now. Brian. Bye. Thanks, Brian. Take care. Thank You're you. Welcome. You too, guys. My pleasure.